It has been two weeks since Meghan Markle officially launched American Riviera Orchard. I still have to think about the name. And it seems to have been nothing but an epic disaster. Yes, oh yes, she is filing endless trademarks for upcoming products. But it has been two weeks and we are still not only sans products, but we still don't really even know what American Riviera Orchard is about. They're going to sell dog food, candles, lavender lotions or something. It just seems like there's just so much going on, yet so little substance to grasp. And again, I've said this from the very beginning. This was not a good launch. This was really, really a bad, bad launch launch and it's just getting worse and obviously megan could not account for everything happening particularly with princess Catherine her recent cancer diagnosis but if i was a working for megan markle one of the first things i would have told her is yes 100 percent. you cannot launch this brand until you at least have one single product you can sell because if you are just going to let the name sit there for infinity no one is going to care in fact to the rest of the industry you look pretty incompetent because you could compare Meghan Markle, you could say, who has a very, very recognizable name with two very famous celebrities who decide to leave the entertainment industry and enter the fashion industry. And they took it by storm. And they really tried to not use their name and notoriety to sell their products. Obviously, it helped. They had the capital to start the company to begin with. But they've created a lot of successful lines of clothing and a very, very reputable brand by not really relying on their name. They relied on something else entirely, which was quality and being able to know your market. Megan doesn't seem to have a market. She doesn't even seem to know what she's doing. She has even apparently hired a CEO for this company. And I'm sure if she had before, the CEO would have gone, mm, maybe you should change this brand name. So we are going to discuss this epic train wreck because I think we can all learn from it, especially if you are thinking about entering this entrepreneurial market. There's just some good ideas and brand theory that you should be aware of because it'll help you with your success. And we can all observe and recognize some of the failures that Meghan Markle has had in this operation. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network before, my name is Brittany. I provide y'all compelling royal commentary about the latest news, sometimes the drama going on behind the scenes. So if you guys want to hit that subscribe button, that would be absolutely fantastic. I also have a couple links down below that you might want to be aware of. Two are a upcoming trips, one to Scotland and one to Germany and the Czech Republic around Christmas. So the Scotland one is this summer. The other one is at Christmas time touring the Christmas market. So I'm very excited about that. And I also have a deal with Anna Lucia Diamonds. And I did accidentally, I myself accidentally broke my diamond band here, but I did get it back from Anna Lucia Diamonds, which is one of the sponsors of this video. And I absolutely love this tennis bracelet. As soon as I got it back, I was like, oh, that's so cool. I had been wearing it on the arm with my watch and I leaned up one day and I accidentally broke it with my watch. So I'm like, okay, so we'll stay on the other wrist, but I'm absolutely loving. It is so, so gorgeous, so elegant and such a great price too, because they're lab created diamonds. And I know we all want some extra bling because all I do sometimes for TR Tuesdays is look at the bling and I don't have that much bling and it makes me sad. My earrings are also from them as well. My studs and these ones as well, which I wear all the time. I don't ever really take these out because I've always loved the, just the solitaire stud. And it's, it's not a whole diamond. It's just partial ones put together, but it looks like it. And that's what the counts. So guys, if you're interested in any of that, it will be linked down below. And if you use the code Braille 20, you shall save 20%. Meghan Markle has the world at her fingertips in many ways. Now, that could be argued. Obviously, she is not an exceptionally popular person, but she has the name recognition that most people would kill for because people pretty much all around the world know who Meghan Markle is, except for countries maybe that don't get a lot of royal news or just don't even care. And I, I can't blame you because sometimes this space can get rather odd. But I do love rails and all the pomp and ceremony that comes with it. But anyways, because of Meghan Markle's, you could say, huge brand recognition, that when she launches whatever she was going to launch, it should have been wildly successful. But we are sitting two weeks post-launch. She's sitting at 578,000 followers. Now, that might be extremely ex impressive for most people, but she is also married to the son of the King of England. And this is the best she can do. Yes, I know he's the king of United Kingdom, but I, I like saying king of England. I don't know why. It's probably like a connection to the Robin Hood movie or something. Anyways, this is 57,000 followers more than she had 12 days ago. Just She has just grown only 57,000 followers. That's really, really pathetic when you think about it.
It really, really is. And granted, yes, she has this huge name. She has this huge profile. This could still be enormously successful. But so far, it leaves a lot to be desired. And a lot of it has to do with branding. I've made this point time and time again. I'm sure some people are like, do you have to talk about this again? But I find it really interesting because branding is key here. And this is really, again, very, very shocking. Meghan Markle should have had the best launch humanly possible. Why? Because she has a lot of money, most likely, to throw at this. So either the thought is, is that she doesn't have the money or that she's not really listening to anyone behind the scenes or she launched it before people were really like, OK, let's do this because her logo is bad. Her branding words are cursive, although it is hers. It's not easy to read. And you want something that's clear and concise, which is what I've done with my own channel. I'm just surprised again with all the resources Meghan Markle has. Somehow my branding is better than hers. It just seems very, very odd to me. And I'm not the only one who agrees. So this is what I thought was like truly interesting and like super exciting because it's always nice when the experts agree with you because I had some people going, oh, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. But no, guys. The experts agree with me. So this is from Ad Age. I actually had to log in to see this whole article. And this Ad Age, it's for professionals. I had to use, they asked particularly for a professional email to sign up. And so it says, Meghan Markle's new lifestyle brand name draws scrutiny from branding experts. And although I'm not an official branding expert, I was used as a example. The blog, Royal News Network, which has over 30,000 followers on X, formerly Twitter, called American Review Era Orchard a horrible name, which it still is, noting that it's too long and not catchy at all, which it is. I have to think about it sometimes. I was trying to talk to my mom about it the other day, and I literally could not think of it. The tweet also referenced the Instagram story from American Riviera Orchard that showed Markle walking in a dress. Yes, because it's confusing branding. What is that supposed to mean? And so it goes down and says, while experts reached by Ad Age had plenty of qualms with the brand name, from its length to its generic nature, they noted that the moniker doesn't limit the brand's ability to expand into other product lines. People will buy stuff because it's Meghan Markle's company, not because of the name. I think that is both true and not true. Some people will not buy it just because of the name. Some people will buy it just because. Some people will not buy it just because. So she has this very divisive relationship with the public. So people either love her or hate her. There's just generally not a bunch of neutral when it comes to Megan. Experts, however, also said they didn't think the name would help the brand succeed either. Again, <laughs> American Riviera Orchard did not immediately respond to Ad Age's request for comment. Digital agency article confirmed that it had designed the brand's landing page, but it did not design the logo. The agency declined to comment further. So this is interesting. I don't know if anybody's really caught on to that yet. We know for sure she designed the lettering because that's her fancy cursive that she likes to call calligraphy. But when it comes to the logo, I imagine she designed that as well on a napkin or something. Can you imagine? Think about it. She might have that framed somewhere. I move so fast with all this. I don't even know how, where half of my Royal News Network stuff is. If I have like an archive of special things that I should keep, I don't know. So here's another branding strategist says, I think the name American Riviera Orchard is at least initially confusing, which it is. And she has not helped elaborate on. The name lacks nuance and intrigue one expects from a luxury lifestyle brand, but we don't even know if she is. I mean, you could kind of guess that she is, but you don't really know either. Again, terrible branding. It's generic and obvious, shouting luxury and leaving nothing to the imagination. Yes, you can hate on Gwyneth Paltrow's goop, but at least goop makes sense. I actually like Preserve, which was Blake Lively's brand, but for like something related to history. Like I was thinking about it as like, ooh, if I designed a lifestyle brand i would like preserve because then i could talk about history and stuff and that would be part of it like a, an echo of the past or something in fashion and stuff it feels like a name you might see from a big box or discount store <laughs> trying to launch an upmarket brand with no understanding of the luxury consumer it's trying so hard where is the subtlety oh that's bad that's so bad guys i haven't really fully read this in a little bit because this came out i think uh over a week ago but that is so bad. <laughs> it's pretty anodyne and there's nothing unique or compelling about it, Sutton said. 
So, and is also the co-founder of Catchword, a naming and branding company. I would love to actually ask them what they think of my branding name. The name, however, has its roots. Montecito, California is known to some as the American Riviera, Plapper pointed out. And using the word American in the name reminds the world that Markle's identity goes beyond the Duchess of Sussex. She's also chosen a crest-like logo and calligraphy typography that has a very royal vibe. So she is also playing both sides, which hasn't really worked. Here's the thing. Playing both sides hasn't worked for them. They need to pick a lane. They need to either be royal or not royal. They, they can't do this in-between thing. They cannot do this in-between thing anymore. It ain't working. It ain't working. But the tie-in to Markle's home might not be obvious enough to make an impact, according to Sutton. Until I looked into the name, I had no idea Santa Barbara was called the American Riviera. And that's true, too. And Sutton also suggested that the orchard part of the name is too vague. And again, too, when you think about American Riviera Orchard, you don't know it's Santa Barbara, but also in addition as well, will you always stay in Santa Barbara? Are you going to move at some point? Like it really ties you into Santa Barbara for the foreseeable future when you may decide that you don't want to stay there anymore. It says there are orchards in Santa Barbara, but they all seem to be Apple orchards. Do Harry and Meghan own one? Are the products going to be Apple themed? I suppose they added the word orchard because American Riviera was not an available as a name one wonders if they are infringing on anyone's trademarks a thousand percent a question guys a thousand percent a question and again it just doesn't make a ton of sense others suggested that the american riviera part of the name could limit the brand in the long run geographically speaking the limiting factor of the name is it's tied to a particular geography what if she wants to begin sourcing products or ingredients from other parts of the country or working with artisans from other parts of the world by rooting the name in a specific part of the country, it defines a brand by its origins rather than being inspired by it. Yes, I had this whole theory about Meghan Markle naming the brand after a wildflower. I can't remember. It's like Bodicea or something, which almost sounds like the female Celtic warrior that the Romans fought in, I want to say, the 70s AD or something like that. I can't remember quite remember. Her statue is right outside Westminster and Big Ben. Big Ben, really. So if you ever see that statue, that's who that is. But yeah. And so that would have been interesting because it would have been inspired by yet, but yet not totally tied to it either. Because I agree here. It's too tied geographically. What if she moves? And she wants to be a royal, yet she's also referencing America. Again, too much confusion. Experts don't think the name will limit the product categories the brand can sell, however. Given the high-profile nature of this brand, I think the name itself will not limit its offerings. Products for outdoor living includes recipes, food, and kitchen supplies could fit under this. The name absolutely can stretch to go into other categories like beauty, personal care, food, beverage, spirits, and beyond. It can function as a true lifestyle brand, which apparently is sort of what Meghan Markle is trying to do. And so we have some more things like from all the various trademarks, stationery, textile, tablecloths, kitchen linens, paper gift bags, gift wrap, calligraphy pens, calligraphy pens. Really? There are so many calligraphy pens like she doesn't need a special calligraphy pen to sell. That's just silly. Is she going to teach us how to do her fancy cursive? I don't know, because I feel like true calligraphy is like how they did it in the Middle Ages. That's how I learned in fourth grade, because I had a teacher who was interested in that kind of stuff. So that's what I think of. We also have, goodness, decorative cords, ribbons of textile materials, not for use in hair accessories, apparently. Beads for crafting, other than making jewelry. Floor mats, meditation mats, yoga mats, yoga boosters, pillows, furniture, outdoor furniture. So literally everything on the planet she may sell at some point. But again, we don't have any particular launch for any of this. The name's length was a chief complaint among branding experts and internet critics alike. Yes, that's what I said. It's always nice when the professionals agree with you. It's too long, Faye Hertzvitz said. I can't think of many brands that have three words beyond legacy media businesses, which are now mostly acronyms, let alone any lifestyle brand. Hill House Home is three words, but it has alliteration working in its favor, he continued, adding that the length and sounds make it a tough name to remember. I haven't heard anyone be able to recall it without stumbling or saying it incorrectly. Again, wow, that's bad. That's really, really bad. And it doesn't help when all she's doing is filing endless trademarks without a single product. 
The name would have been better if it harkened back to something more personal about Megan other than our zip code, these experts agree. I would probably have suggested the name be more related to something more personal from Megan Markle's life as she is the embodiment of this brand. As it stands, this brand could be from anyone and does not feel specific to the Duchess as a person. I might have chosen something that's more related to Megan and Harry as people or related to the brand values. Because I actually think when it comes to the, the name I suggested, which was a wild flower that grows in the area, Meghan Markle's nickname as a child was Flower. So she could re-reference that nickname by using a particular flower within the region. Like, it kind of makes sense. Bayhurt Fitz also said that he would have encouraged Megan to choose a more personal name. Celebrity brands that don't make that connection clear enough often fail. Remember Blake Lively's lifestyle brand Preserve. Most people don't because she wasn't tied closely enough to the brand and it ultimately didn't last. All right. So that is the end. And I think, again, great, great critiques there. So, yes, Meghan Markle, in terms of this branding effort, really has largely failed here. And it's just not a situation that I don't think is going to get any better because my suggestion for Meghan would have been, OK, what are you absolutely passionate about that you haven't seen as a product or haven't seen the iteration that you want. So an example I thought would be a good counter to Meghan Markle, if she had really thought about it, would be the brand created by Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen called The Row. And The Row is very expensive. Obviously, these are tank tops or T-shirts that cost $590. So you're talking about $550, $590. Very, very expensive for cotton t-shirts. Okay. So Mary Kane and Ashley Olsen started this brand because Ashley wanted to find the perfect t-shirt that would fit every woman. So that is what she set out to do. And so she went through and designed a bunch of different t-shirts, had people try a variety of them on of women of all shapes and sizes. I would imagine probably not really all shapes and sizes. Cause let's see how large do the, the sizes get here. Oh, XX large. Awesome. I've never tried on the clothes, so I don't know. But they wanted to concentrate on something very specific here. I'll bring up the pink one because I like pale pink. And they wanted to join. Oh, this one's, I believe this one is entirely sold out, guys. Wow. And so to launch this brand because they wanted to get into the fashion. If you're not familiar with Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, they were massive names in the 90s because of Full House. I was well aware of who Mary Kate and Ashley were. I had a couple of their videos. I had a friend who was obsessed with them, like absolutely obsessed. They had product lines at Walmart and so many different places. And what happened as they were children, because they were very small and petite, which they still are, is that they had to oftentimes get adult clothes tailored down to them. And so as they grew up, they got more and more interested in this fashion side. And so they wanted to create something that reflected their tastes. And so they created the row. And so the row, when it launched, let me pull up the Wikipedia page here. It had seven pieces. So again, yeah, Ashley looked to find the perfect t-shirt and wanted to find a commonality in fit and attitude for women of all body shapes and ages. And so the Olsen's created a seven piece collection that included the shirt, a pair of cotton sateen leggings and a cashmere wool tank dress. Barney's New York bought the entire collection and it has expanded greatly. Now it is sort of uh, one of those brands. If you know, you know, it very much fits the quiet luxury aesthetic that people are so obsessed with. And obviously as well, you can see, think it's some of it's a little ridiculous and obviously very, very expensive, but they have created this huge brand. And honestly, there have been a couple of things of theirs that I've liked but I don't like everything, but they have a very, very loyal fan base and they've created items that work for them. But here's the thing. Here's the thing I thought for Megan that she should have started with. She should have started small. She should have started small. She should have had, I would say maybe three to five products to start off with when she launched American Riviera Orchard. It could have been the calligraphy pen because you could tie it into the lettering that she did for the brand. Uh, she could have done maybe a napkin because the whole branding and everything sort of looks like something that you would put on a napkin. Anyways, none of these are great ideas, really. And a couple other things that really reflect things that she wanted. Because I think 
when I created this channel, I wanted a channel that focused so much on all royal stuff because I would see stuff about Harry and Meghan, but I wanted to talk about other royals and I wasn't seeing a bunch of that. And I wanted to have something that talked about commentary and then looked at movies and TV shows and a whole bunch of other things that I, I will hopefully get to at one point. But given that I'm just one person, I only have so much of a bandwidth. But, but I had the vision there. And so I started out with the one thing I could do, which was Royal News Network. And yes, I focused a lot on Harry and Meghan stuff, but that is obviously what people want to talk about oftentimes. And I included other things like videos on Catherine and William and Tiara's more in the beginning, but as in fashion, I had a fashion Friday, but as I started going through and developing the channel more, I worked out some of the kinks and realized, well, if the news channel is responding to news, that means that the videos could change based on the day. Like for example, I had the TR Tuesday video ready to go on Friday. Yes, I know that's a couple of days late and I had it ready to go last Friday, but then Catherine announced her diagnosis. So I had to set it back. But if I had one single channel, I don't even know when that video would have gone up again, because the thing is, if I had the one channel and there's just so many different things going on, you, you develop too many channels. And so that's what I wanted to avoid all that to say that as I'm going through and I grow the brand, I find different things. I work out different niches and I find that people like certain things, don't like other things. And that's totally fine. And I just try to put a silo for each individual thing. I'm hoping here, although Catherine's news really threw everything for a loop and I feel like the Royal sphere on Twitter and everything has gone absolutely crazy. I'm going to launch next month because I, I want to have it done before I hopefully go off to Europe in May is have a podcast that talks about the other Royal news stories that we're not seeing. Cause I'm really hoping some of the content that I get from visiting Scandinavia, I'm hoping to follow the Danish Royals on their tour of Sweden and Norway is that we'll have additional Royal news to talk about. Maybe I'll even get to ask one of them a question. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. That'd be amazing. We'll see. And so it's just an opportunity to see Royals in different spheres, or they may speak in English as they're discussing something at a particular event. And hopefully I can pick it up and share it with you guys. But that's what happens as you grow a brand. The problem is Megan launched her brand with nothing. Now I will say I actually did this. Uh, this channel technically launched in 2021, but it wasn't active until March of 2022. So I launched it, but I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell a bunch of people, oh, go to this site. I actually have another Royal News Network channel, connected channel that I have technically launched, but I haven't told anybody to go to it yet. Why? Because I don't have anything there <laughs> and I don't know when I'll get things there. It'll be a place where what I've noticed other people do is that when they have particular live streams and stuff like that, they'll clip the shorter segments and put them on a different channel. And so that's what I'm planning on doing because I've seen other people do that. I kind of like how that works. And so that is what I will be doing in the future so I can have something that is people can consume in different ways. The longer form will reside here and then I'll have the shorter things on other channels. Again, I've seen other people do it. So I, I think I'm just going to copy what they're doing. But anyways, I haven't told you guys about it yet because you don't need to know because there's nothing there. Like until I have something there, until I feel comfortable that I'm able to post things that I like the things I'm posting and that the things are good, then I'll tell you, yes, you can go over there. But I'm not going to launch something with no products. And yes, Catherine's news, of course, probably somewhat derailed Megan's plans. But what we seem to get more and more every day is additional trademarks and no action. It just seems to be this constant churning of we're going to eventually sell this and this and this and this and this. That's great. But what product do you have now? You need to have a product now. That Megan hasn't done that. I find utterly shocking and just completely incompetent. And it's been reported that Megan is looking for a CEO. I don't know why she launched a brand without a CEO. That, that doesn't sound like a brilliant idea. I would think you would want to have a CEO in place before launching a brand because the CEO might be able to offer you some directions because if you're asking somebody to be the CEO, I would think the most competent CEOs would want to be able to manage this brand to the best of their abilities. But the problem is, I think Megan won't let them. Megan, to me, seems to be somebody who always needs to be surrounded by yes people which is why in part, I think they have a high turnover rate because the they're all yes people. And then Harry and Megan get mad when things don't go their way. And that becomes very, very frustrating. And if you have just yes people, and if you're trying to give them constructive criticism and Megan hates it every time you do that, well, you just get disheartened because you're just thinking to yourself, I'm just trying to help you. I just want to help you. And somehow I'm getting punished or I just feel that I can't function because every time I try to offer you something, 
you just slap it right out of my hand. And I, I can't offer you what I want to offer because I'm a professional. Like anybody, these people are professionals. They know what they're doing. And so if Megan is trying to launch this all herself without a CEO, I just don't see that going in a very good way. And I think like Tom Bauer said, and I think this is totally true, there is an inherent danger here because he said, we've been told that Megan's syrupy new lifestyle brand will reflect everything she loves, family cooking, not family, family cooking, entertaining and home decor. But bizarrely named American Riviera Orchard is best described as a time bomb for the royal family. Despite the homey talk of cutlery recipes and upmarket jam, this has the appearance of blatant cashing in. An initiative by the former actress to secure a financial safety net for when the Sussex's earnings from Netflix and Spotify evaporate. And I think that's a pretty good assessment. And given everything that's happened with Catherine and Charles over the last couple of weeks, because we've even had Charles be the victim of campaigns saying that he is dead. This is from Russian territories, apparently. And I think somebody mentioned that there's been weird royal reporting in China about the health of Catherine. And because you have all this stuff going on, there's an obvious misinformation campaign going on. And I think this is in part I did a whole video on this, sowing dissension within the country and trying to discredit or at least damage the credibility of the monarchy. And I would argue in some ways this effort has been somewhat successful. What really strikes me is that, yes, the monarchy, I think, made a couple of PR mistakes, I think, especially in these last couple of months. There, they weren't massive ones. But here's the thing that happened is that because Harry and Meghan, you could argue, landed the first blow. They damaged the monarchy by obviously trying to cash in on their titles, going on Oprah, going on Netflix, Harry's book, so many ways they tried to erode on the monarchy. And it's it's succeeded in some ways. It's definitely succeeded. It's made the monarchy into this sideshow attraction that it didn't used to be. Yes, yes, of course, we always had drama and stuff, but it really had elevated past that because you have the whole disastrous war of the whales is in the 90s and you had obviously Fergie and Andrew as well and so many things going on then and there was also Princess Margaret and some of her activities and you also had obviously King Edward himself who abdicated but the monarchy had seemingly risen above that over these last 20 plus years and then Meghan Markle entered the picture and she turned the monarchy into a tabloid sideshow she did. And because of that, it has damaged the reputation of her, but the monarchy as well. And what I think happened is that as obviously Charles and Catherine were recovering from surgery and everything, there was quiet because there was an acceptance of the initial message. But as time went on, I think especially the Sussex squad started it because Harry and Meghan had emboldened them with all this crazy stuff about the monarchy, started rumors about Catherine in particular. And then what happened is because there is a lot of tension going on in Europe right now, you could say between most of the West and Russia and its allies, you could say that they decided they looked at that and go, you know what? That works for us because Russia is thinking the UK is supporting Ukraine. In fact, the king of the Netherlands not too long ago was actually in the UK working with some of the troops there that were training to go to Ukraine. And so because of that, you could say that Russia is not particularly happy with the UK because it wants this war to go its way. So what does it do? Why? Obviously, we have this talk of Catherine. Let's take some of our army and amplify it because disinformation is a huge part of military tactics. If you can sow dissent and then disinformation too, it works to your benefit. And so this started getting magnified because you had so many bots attached. And then you had the additional level of the media buying into it. Again, I want to criticize the mainstream media so much for starting to go down these paths, for even suggesting anything in the first place, because this whole thing could have ended if they didn't also go in on the madness, but they decided to go in on the madness. So it gave credence to what started with the Sussex squad was magnified by the UK's enemies. And then it was given legitimacy by the mainstream media and Meghan Markle and her antics started this. Yes, she didn't finish it. Yes, she, she wasn't behind, obviously, the Photoshopped image that Catherine put out there of her family. And I think, again, that was a totally innocent scenario that got completely out of control. But sadly, it also fueled the people who were already 
trying to fuel the myths and disinformation. It worked wildly in their favor. Just so many things culminated together, but really started with the antics of Harry and Meghan because Meghan Markle wanted to be a star and she wanted to make loads and loads of cash. And she thought Harry and the monarchy had loads and loads of cash. She didn't understand that luxury has a price and the designer clothes that she wanted has a price. And that price was duty, service, respect, and honor. She needed to serve the British people. She needed to respect the institution and she needed to honor the monarchy. And she needed to do her duty, which was to represent it abroad to countries all over the world. And she couldn't do that because she was more interested in launching something like American Riviera Orchard because she always thought that she needed a Birkin or something. And so she needs something that's going to make her as much money as humanly possible so she can buy more ugly Hermes coats to one day buy an Hermes Birkin. That is my thoughts on this. And the monarchy did itself no favors by allowing Harry and Meghan to continue to erode the monarchy's credibility. Their antics, every time they came out with something, every time they used their titles, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, they damaged the monarchy. Just Meghan Markle, her title being on that website, damages the monarchy. Just this by Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. It damages the monarchy because it makes it seem like just any other lifestyle brand out there. And the monarchy is not that. It serves a very important purpose. It represents the United Kingdom in its own country and abroad. And Meghan just does not have the respect of any of that. And she is willing to do anything she can to get her way and to make as much money as possible, no matter who it damages in the process. And right now, her behavior since entering the royal fold, you could argue, is currently damaging Charles and Catherine as they're going through cancer treatment. So guys, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know if you think I eventually made my points. I'd love to get your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon. Bye.